Welcome to the Sort It Out SI League Guide for Sweden, where we'll look at the league structure within Football Manager 2023 and run through a few save ideas if you want to start your career in Sweden. Let's have a look. On FM23, Sweden has four playable levels featuring 10 divisions and 147 playable teams. Uh, Sweden also play their domestic season over a single calendar year rather than the traditional European winter season. Uh, so you've got the option when you start your game to start either at the beginning of the 2022 season or the 2023 season, which is about to start in the real world. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start out with the top tier, the All Svenskan, which features 16 teams playing a double round robin schedule to fill out a 30 game season. Now, in terms of European continental qualification, uh, the league champions enter the qualifying rounds of the UEFA Champions League. I think it's the third Champions Path playoff uh, qualifying round. Uh, and then there are three further places for the Europa, uh, UEFA Europa Conference League, which are split between the league and the Svensk Kupen, the domestic cup. So if the winner of the cup hasn't already qualified through the league, they get a qualification. If they have, an extra place goes to the league. Right, in terms of transfer and squad registration rules, there are very few restrictions, honestly, aside from a few limitations on the number of loans that you can make or receive throughout the season. But they're still rather generous. The other squad registration rules are pretty much anyone. You can yeah, that there's no real rules uh, to hamper you uh, in your quest for Swedish glory. Okay, so the bottom two teams are automatically relegated into the second tier Super Etten, uh, whilst 14th place will face off against third place in the, in the division below in a two-legged promotion relegation playoff. The winner goes into the All Svenskan, the loser into the Super Etten. And the Super Etten itself is also a 16-team league following the same 30-game schedule uh, as the, and the same structure as the Old Svenskan above it. Uh, the main difference being that 13th and 14th place go into a relegation playoff as the third, third tier below them is split into two divisions. So still two automatic relegation places, but 13th and 14th are also at jeopardy. Uh, so basically, uh, they go into the playoffs as well. Uh, and the divisions below that are Division 1, Nora and Sodra, so North and South. Uh, they're both 16-team leagues as well at level 3. Uh, and the league champions are automatically promoted into the Super Etten. And then the second place teams in both leagues go into that two legs playoff. Uh, so that means basically that you can get anywhere from two, three or four teams relegated from the Super Etten in any given season. Uh, the rest of the third tier, the Division 1, is the same sort of structure as the tiers above it. Uh, so we won't dwell on that too much. Uh, it's the fourth tier, really, Division 2, which gets a little bit more complex. Uh, so there are six regional divisions of either 13 or 14 teams each. I think it goes to 14 again uh, in 2023, um, which basically all link to a parent division from the tier above. So the North Division, Division 1 Nora, has links to Division 2 Norland, Nora Svarland, and Sodra Svarland, whilst Division 1 Sodra has links to Division 2 Vastrogotaland, Nora Gotaland, and Ostra Gotaland, which I think is basically all East, North, and West. Got to land. Uh, anyway, each Division 2 winner is automatically promoted uh, into their corresponding Division 1 league, uh, whilst the second place teams go into a playoff group. So these six second place teams are placed into two groups of three, and they each play each other once in a mini league. The winners of those two groups then face off with the two 13th place teams, are you following this, from Division 1 in a two leg -like playoff, with the winners either going up to or staying in Division 1. So you can you can see how it so the six six league winners in division two are automatically promoted and then there's a playoff with a mini group and then they drag in two teams from the league above you with me okay you got it right <clears throat> uh division two relegation uh, is automatic for teams finishing 13th or 14th place but 12th place heads into a 12 team i believe knockout playoff with six teams from the unplayable division three basically don't finish in 12th or lower and you'll be fine in division two Okay, right, the domestic cup competition, the Svenska Cooper. Now, I mentioned earlier that we play in Sweden on a domestic, the domestic schedule is over a calendar year. It's not the case for the Svenska Cooper because that basically spreads over two seasons and fits in with a normal European winter schedule. We'll get there. Right, so the winner of the Svenska Cooper qualifies for the Europa Conference League if they haven't already qualified through the league. If they have, an extra place goes to fourth place in the league in the old Svenskan. Now, as I said, the Svenska Kupen runs across two seasons 
following that traditional winter schedule basically lines up with European football as well. It starts in July with the first two rounds taking place during in the first season, the 2022 season. And then the group stage, which we'll come to in a second, through to the final all happened during the 2023 season. So the group stage kicks off just before the regular all Svenskan season. And then the final finishes in May. You're still with me? Okay, so Division 1 and Division 2 teams, 64 of them, so not all of them, incidentally. 64 teams from Division 1 and, 60, and, and Division 2, so all of the Division 1 teams, 32 there, and then 32 teams from the Division 2 leagues, enter into Round 1. If there's a lower division side in either tie, they will play at home, and the winners of the tie will go forward into Round 2, where the 32 teams from the Allsvenskan and the Super Essen enter and once again, any lower division sides will play at home. So there's 32 winners from round one. The 32 top two tier teams go in. And the winners of those 32 matches, so 32 teams will come out of the second round. They advance into a group stage, which is eight groups of four. So this takes place just before the next season begins. Uh, and teams face each other just once in the groups. A single uh, round robin, not a double round robin. Uh, with the winners of each group, just one team out of each group advancing to the quarterfinals. Uh, from there, the eight teams go into a single, uh, a straight single elimination tournament with a winner emerging by the end of May. Okay, breathe. We've covered the domestic structure now. So let's go and have a look at a few different save ideas in FM23 uh, for Sweden. Uh, we've got an array of clubs with varying histories and expectations for the first season game, ranging from expectant champions to teams in desperate need of a rebuild who have fallen down the ladder. Right, the first team that we are going to look at are the 2021 Swedish champions and the side who have won the most titles in Swedish history with 22 and that is Malmo FF. Now Swedish football is quite has got quite parity really. There's no dominant team but the closest thing that we have got to a dominant team in Sweden is Malmo and Di Blar who are the Blues uh, from the south are pretty much not only do they have the record for the league titles They've got the record for the most Svenska Kupen victories and they have the distinction of being the only side from any of the Nordic countries, so Sweden, Norway, Finland, Denmark, Iceland, Faroe Islands, etc. to reach a European Cup final. They did so in 1979 and famously lost to Brian Clough's Nottingham Forest, but don't let that be a problem. They are still the most successful side from the Nordic countries. Right, uh, Malmo have strong facilities and a healthy bank balance. Uh, really, they are prime candidates for you to manage should you want to have immediate domestic success. But they did not win the 2022 season, which is just concluded. So the one you'll be playing in game if you start in 2022, that's just finished. That honor goes to BK Hacken from Gothenburg. Now, getting Ghana, which are the Wasps in Swedish, are a fairly young team at the top table of Swedish football. They've got two Svenska Kupen victories from 2016 and 2019 before they had that success in the league. And if you were to manage them in game and start in the 22 season, you're going to have the immediate challenge of trying to replicate that pretty well, somewhat unlikely rise to the top of Swedish football. They, they probably weren't expected to be all Svenskan champions at the beginning of the season. I mean, their media prediction in game is a lot lower than first. Let's put it that way. But they've got good facilities, somewhat moderate and modest financials compared to their rivals for the title, but they do have the league's top goal scorer in Alexander Yaramejev, who is in his third stint with the club and will lead them to glory, as he did in the real world, if you can manage them to success. Now, if you're looking for a club to manage with a great track record of producing young talent and the youth recruitment within the game that is likely to continue this trade, then I'd highly recommend IF Bromopoikana. Now, they have a fantastically difficult name to pronounce, uh, but the side from the capital Stockholm do have one of the best young Swedish talents in FM23 in midfielder Lucas Bergvall. Now, BP sit in the Super Etten currently if you're starting in the 2022 season. Uh, and they have played at least one season in all four tiers over the last 20 years. So they've been down in Division 2. They've been up in the Allsvenskan uh, and up in the Allsvenskan as recently as 2018. But last season, the 2021 season, uh, they were promoted from the Division 1 Nora as champions. Uh, so your challenge, if you choose to accept it, is to replicate their real-life success of back-to-back -back promotions, win the Super Etten and return to the All Svenskan at the first time of asking. Now, can you help foster a youth movement and take BP to their first ever All Svenskan title in their history? 
Now, the final two teams on this list have definitely won the Old Svenskan in the past. They've definitely been Swedish champions in the past, and they both come from Gothenburg, and they've both fallen on really hard times recently, despite their success in the past of Swedish football. Now, the first of these sides is Orgroit AS, who are currently in the Super Eta. Now, AS uh, were the winners of the first four Swedish football championships before the All Sense on back in the late 1890s. Uh, Salskapet, or the Society, were a dominant force uh, in pre-World War I era Swedish football. But their most recent title came via some strange playoff system that the All Sense on had in the mid 80s. They didn't win the league, but they did become Swedish champions. A little bit of a mess. Uh, but basically, for the last 15 years, IS have been outside of the top flight. Uh, they returned from Division 1 Sodra um, and have firmly basically set themselves as a low to mid table Super Retin side. Uh, the immediate challenge is to avoid falling into the relegation playoffs, which they did in the 22 season, which is just finished. And then from there, once you've avoided that threat, you've got to rebuild the side basically and turn them back into the force they once were right at the beginning of Swedish football history and win their first Swedish title in nearly 40 years. So the final side on the list of teams to potentially manage in Sweden on FM23. As mentioned, it's another team from Gothenburg and they are in desperate need of a rebuild as well. And that is Geis. So G-A-I-S, Geis. I don't know how you would prefer to pronounce it, but the Makrilana or the Makarals were founding members and inaugural champions of the Sve All Svenskan in 1925. So we've covered the first ever Swedish champions. Now we've covered the first All Svenskan winners. And that was the first of their four titles, but it's a feat they haven't repeated since the 1950s. So they've gone a long way downhill since then. They were the best side in Gothenburg for a long while, but since about the 70s when IFK came to force, they've gradually just worked their way down and now they're the at least third best team who play at the same stadium. It's a big stadium in Gothenburg and they've got good facilities for the level they're at, but they find themselves now down in the third tier. Division one Sodra is where they start the game in 2022 but they are expected to immediately return to the Super Eton, something they did manage in the real season that's just finished. So they won the Division 1 Sodra title in 2022. But if you're starting the season in 22, that's your immediate challenge. As I said, decent facilities for the level they now find themselves at. Not much money, but they will certainly need a rebuild if they are to once again become the biggest side in Gothenburg and all of Sweden. So there we have it, a whistle-stop tour of the playable Swedish leagues on Football Manager, along with five great save ideas, which I'd love to hear about in the comments down below. If you are obviously familiar with either real-life Swedish football or you've managed them extensively on Football Manager, which I have in, in, in editions past, uh, please head to the comments and share your thoughts. Uh, any corrections, something I've got wrong, any pronunciations I've got wrong, there's probably going to be many of them. Uh, and importantly, any stories of managing in Sweden that you've got that you'd like to share down in the comments. And whilst you're there, please remember to like this video and subscribe to the Sort It Out SI channel if you haven't already. And please check out more league guys that are going to come up in the screen in a second and all of the other great content here on the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you on the next one.